YMCA certified open water scuba diver, rental and roof. Don't laugh at the picture. <laughs> uh, here's the back of the card. I can't show my social security numbers on there, so I'm not going to show that, but there's the back. All right, I'll show the picture again. <laughs> this is back in, this was issued on 9-2-92, uh, so that means it's 2002, 20 years old, a few days ago, wow. That's what it looks like 20 years ago. Man, time flies. Anyway, what I'm here to talk to you about today is uh, the basics, the basics of scuba diver, scuba diver, scuba, scuba diving, open water, dive charts, and how to use them, and talk about some of the things you need to do when you plan your dives, because you need to plan your dives. And what I, what I mean by planning dives is plan how deep you're going to go at the most, and how long you're going to stay there. Because it's very important for those of you who like to go deeper, keep in mind how deeper isn't always better when it comes to scuba diving. Anyway, okay. First of all, let me talk about the three charts that I have. Well, I got two of them with me right here. This is the Patty uh, uh, dive chart, and I have the book "Diving for Fun" by Joe Strykowski. This is the book I learned uh, scuba diving with uh, at the, the through the YMCA scuba program at um, Dollar Pool and. and uh, Columbus East High School Swimming Pool through the Park and Rec Association in Columbus, Indiana. And in here are the U.S. Navy Standard Dive Tables. And I don't have the YMCA table. I, uh, they're right here somewhere, but I don't know. Anyway, here are the basic differences <clears throat> to start off with. The YMCA tables are more conservative. That means the YMCA Open Water Certification says that our standards are that that 100 feet is the most you're supposed to do with scuba. However, with the paddy, on this, I think it was 100, uh, it goes up to um, 140 for two minutes, which pff, isn't very long. But anyway, it goes up to 140 feet. So, with everything 100 feet more being very cautionary. But anyway, and then of course you have your, your Navy dive tables, which are used throughout the uh, professional uh, Navy, navies, not just our, the American Navy, but navies all over the world. Then they go up to, oh gosh, uh, they go up to 190. So, uh, but keep in mind, now, now for one, I don't have an exact picture of history, but you're saying, and uh, when you consider YMCA is 100 foot, uh, Patty is 140, and the uh, U.S. Navy is 190 feet for open open circuit scuba, or not for circuit, but for scuba diving, you you might ask yourself, what's going on here? Well, first of all, let me I'm, I don't have a complete picture of history, but basically what it is with the Navy, as far as I understand it, here's here's a little brief history of it. Basically, learning. About how long you can, how deep you can go, and how long you can stay at certain depths. When they were starting to learn about that, because people were coming up and get, you know, when the scuba diving first came out, um, what they, the Navy learned these um, through experimentation, learned you know, learned how long and how deep and all this stuff. And one of the things they would do, as general practice is, they would send a diver down to 200, 250 feet, or however deep they wanted to go. With a, circ a scuba, you know, say, okay, your air lasts for how long? Come up, put you in a decompression chamber for a week or two, <laughs> and let them decompress that way. Instead of just being safe about it, they, you know, hey, there's something at 200 feet we need to look at. Go down there when your air runs out, come up. Okay, and then they put them in a decompression chamber for, you know, a week, two, a couple days, a couple hours, couple, whatever needed was appropriate. Well, my understanding is that was good until about World War II, when they needed more divers, and obviously they couldn't. They, before it was cheaper just to have you know a couple divers on a boat doing a thing. They come out, put them in a decompression chamber. They, they could afford a few decompression chambers, okay? But as World War II came around, they needed diver, more divers on a more regular basis, and 
as compared to putting, you know, putting a few, you know, buying a whole bunch of decompression, decompression chambers are very expensive, to say the least. And plus they needed divers already, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't put their divers in decompression for a week or two, they needed them diving on a daily basis, and a bunch of them. So what they did is they went to mixed gas systems, and that way they could sit down longer and do more stuff, and do it on a daily basis. So that's something, scuba and mixed gas are completely two different uh, ways of diving, and I'm not really briefed on that, but I'm an open water scuba tank guy, so that's I'll talk to what, to what I know about. But uh, mixed gas is an entirely different thing, where you can go a lot deeper, a lot longer, and decompress for shorter periods of time, depending on how deep you get. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of things that go into it. Anyway, the basic of dive charts. Okay, what it is, you have... The theory is, the scientific theory is, R you got to remember this, RNT plus ABT equals TBT. That's residual nitrogen, RNT, plus ABT, actual bottom time, equals total bottom time. That's a, a very important theory to remember. Uh, RNT plus ABT equals TBT. Okay? Remember that. If you're doing any kind of scuba thing, eventually that will be on a test. <laughs> okay, so what we have here, let's say, um, what you need to do is keep a watch, watch or keep a general idea of how long, or have a general idea of how deep you're going to go and how long you're going to stay there. Now let's just say, for instance, we're going to go, okay, 70 feet, okay? We start off, we start off here, this is, okay, we're an A diver, what we call A diver. We're going to go to 60 feet for half hour. So, let's say 31 minutes. You always want to go to the one above it. So 30. So there's K would be 29, and L would be 31. So you want to go to 31, okay? That takes you over to here, and you're an L diver. You come up to the surface, you're an L diver. Now, depending on how long you stay out, let's say we're going to stay out an hour. That takes you down to here, and you're a sea diver, okay? So you've, you've, you've come out, you're out of the water, you're a sea diver, okay? Now, let's say I want to do a second dive in the same day. I come over here to sea, and I do the same thing. I say, how long, how deep am I going to go, and how long? And basically, you just kind of come over here, how long are you going to stay out, and that takes you to the level, okay? So that's the basics um, of how the dive chart works. And... Like I said, when you get into these gray areas, it's, for example, I mean, what, it can take, sometimes it can take up to a half hour just to get into your gear, if you, especially if, you don't, if you're wearing a wetsuit, and to spend that much time, get a half hour or more longer getting into all your gear ready to go to 140 foot for eight minutes, I mean, seriously, really? That to me, unless there's something really, unless you got gold bricks down there, I wouldn't recommend doing it. So, I mean, it's something to think about. But that's the basics of how they work. So it's basically, you start off with A, you figure out your depth and your time, come down, come across, you figure out how long, it tells you where you're at as far as your letters, then you figure out how, or stay out for so long, come down, you can start over wherever you're at, and, you, and let's say you're an eye diver, come up to start the next, next dive, you start at I. So I mean, that's just an example. But that's how the uh, dive chart works. It's very simple. These are very cheap. You can get them on the internet or just go to your local dive store. And I'm sure that most, most dive stores nowadays will have like an advertisement or something on the back and give them to you. But that is the basics of the PADI dive chart. And the YMCA charts are similar. Except, like I said earlier, they're a little bit more conservative as far as times. Which means they're safer. You know what I'm saying? They're, keep in mind, there's an old saying, there's, there's old divers, there's bold divers. But there's no such thing, or a very seldom thing, as an old bull diver. Something to keep in mind. So, there you are. If you need to look, if you don't have them with you, obviously you can go on the internet and Google PADI or YMCA or U.S. Navy Dive Charts and find out exactly what they are. And always dive with a buddy. Make sure your equipment's in good shape. And it's best to plan your dives. That is, plan the time, your depth, and your length. And uh, know all, know how to use your equipment, and know, use it properly. 
So until next time, I'm Ryan Rizzi. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Hope you learned a lot. And may God bless you.